Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. Lights, camera, action. Will a spotlight on film production here in our hometown mean more five-star reviews for our economic growth and bring much-awaited acclaim to Western New York? Well, just recently, production wrapped on a movie that tells a story of Francesca Cabrini, known as Mother Cabrini, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of the 19th century. She began with nothing and created the largest multinational charitable empire the world has ever known. Her accomplishments equal the likes of Vanderbilt and Rockefeller. Well, joining us through Zoom Technology to talk with us about this and other productions is Buffalo Niagara Film Commissioner Tim Clark and in studio, casting director and actor Frank Rossi. Welcome both guys. So glad to have you, Tim. Thank you. How did you convince the produ producers of this big budget movie like Cabrini to shoot their projects here in Buffalo? Who is behind all of this? Well, I, I will say, Your Honor, that it was uh, a fellow here that had been here before, of, um, a producer by the name of Jonathan Sanger, who uh, became acquainted with this project. Uh, and of course, he was also acquainted with Buffalo from uh, the movie Marshall, which uh, uh, shot here a few years back. And uh, he's an Academy Award winning producer. And he and his uh, producing partner, uh, Michael Jones, MJ, um, decided uh, to tell the director and, and uh, the team about Buffalo and um, sort of led them here, but was very also careful not to push Buffalo and Western New York on uh, the production. Uh, they came here and uh, as we all know, uh, it's hard to uh, not be impressed at the architecture and uh, the friendliness of the people and all of the great assets that we have here in Western New York. And uh, I think from the very first trip, they were sold that this was the place indeed to make this movie. So it wasn't too hard of a sale, in other words, for you. No, you know? it, it sells yeah. itself. And I yes. have to tell you, Judge, uh, you know, the people of this uh, great community are uh, such an important part of our uh, uh, sales force, I guess, because uh, it uh, sells itself and the people sell itself. They're very nice, uh, friendly people. We call ourselves the city of good neighbors, and it's just not a chamber of commerce slogan. It's the reality of it all. And I think that uh, what um, uh, the director found and the other producers found was that the people here are just so nice and so accommodating. And, and, uh, and also the talented crew base and uh, in front of the camera, too, is uh, Frank uh, Rossi will attest to, you know, that uh, they they brought a lot of, uh, they brought some principal actors in, but also found some other actors here locally, extras, stand-ins, and principal actors as well. So they realized, too, that there was a talent base to match the, you know, the, the architecture. We always know, know that ourselves, but it's good to, for others to find out. Frank, I just mentioned, what was your, how did you get involved with this program, and what was your role in the project? Uh, I got involved through Jonathan Sanger. Initially, uh, Jonathan came here, was it six years ago, I think, Tim? When uh, yeah, five think so. with Marshall. Right. So they came to me on Marshall, Chris Bongiorno, and asked uh, if we could cast a few people here. And I said, because normally they hadn't shot the hair up to that point, they hadn't shot anything substantial or used principal actors from here. So, suffice to say, uh, I didn't believe him. I just said, Chris, yeah, it's a great script. Call us when you need us. Uh, yeah, yeah, just go on home. And I figured they wouldn't shoot. You know, they'd shoot a week or so. Hey, I said, how many actors do you want? He goes, I need 29, 30 actors that speak locally. Can you do it? And I thought he was kidding. So I just threw, you know, blew him off. And he, he uh, went to L.A. And then he went to the casting director in L.A. who handled the bigger roles, Victoria Thomas, who initially cast me in White Men Can't Jump as an actor. So it started there. Two weeks later, Chris comes back and goes, Frank, you ready? I go, ready for what? Let's go. And so we ended up getting 27 principals locally uh, that speak. So I, there's a big talent pool here of really good actors who, in my opinion, for the smaller roles that speak, can hang with the L.A. and New York people. Well, because you have to audition, and yeah. if you can't compete with New York and L.A., then they have to go to New York and L.A. to get the people. Right. But... We have a lot of great talent here, and some people come back home to work locally, and it's been great. Even on Cabrini, we had 31 speaking parts, and several Italian-Americans were speaking fluent Italian got upgraded to principals that is because they were fluent. So that's how it started. Uh, Jonathan came back this time and said, Frank, um, we need you again. We're going to do uh, principals. Well, they initially wanted to do the principals out of New York. 
and not use any here. But Jonathan said, no, no, let Frank do his thing. And then our guys came through like they usually do. And we're at 31 principals. And, and then 3,200 spots for the extras, which is unprecedented. And I thought they were kidding. I go, Jonathan, you, we can't really, you, you're just, that's too many. He goes, no, yeah, you're right. But it was. So it's several hundred people for 3,200 spots, which that has was, never been done. That was amazing. I was somewhere months, months before you started shooting where you were trying to sign up extras. And we didn't believe you that it was really going to happen. I didn't and believe me either. That Not that many. That many people, we were all saying, oh, this is never going to happen. You know, he's just making it up. He's just dreaming. Hey, Tim, the crews were here and it was shooting was going on for so long and for so many months. Now, what happens now? Is there going to be a time when we're really going to get to see this movie? And where would we see it? Yeah, I think so, Judge. Uh, the, the, it takes about a year, typically, to, for a movie to kind of get to completion. So from, you know, ending the principal shooting to, uh, to seeing it on the silver screen. I think uh, they're, they've got a, a couple of more shots that they want to uh, get, uh, which they're going to travel to Italy uh, sometime in the next few weeks, it sounds like. And, um, you know, once they get everything in the can, as they say, they'll uh, go into the editing rooms and begin the sort of tedious uh, um, role of, of post-production. And, uh, and then edit it and put the music to it and sync up the audio and uh, put the little subtitles in the areas that, uh, uh, although most of the movie is in English, uh, there are a couple of uh, scenes there where some of it is in Italian and um, I understand. And, uh, you know, they'll need to do a lot of that sort of stuff in post-production. But it, uh, it'll take about a year and I think we'll all be excited to see a screening of it here in Western New York, uh, you know, probably next fall. Yes, yes, we all will be exciting, particularly those people who had the principal parts that you talked about are the extras. And among the, uh, you call it like actors that have speaking mm -hmm. roles, right, were father and son duo, Erie County legislator Frank Tadero and his son, who you said were really good and they really liked doing it and the camera really liked them, right? Yes, they both were uh, Frank's son, uh, Giovanni, uh, uh, was a stand-in and an extra. So he stood in for Federico, the lead actor, the young boy, who, by the way, speaks Italian all the way through. So there's a lot of people speaking Italian with subtitles and then broken English Italian. So Frank, what there were, I, I just want to say that th this is a whole community effort, starting with Mark Tremont and Mike Bellani, helping get on TV, the radio, to get this publicized, Facebook, then you have like people like uh, uh, Peter Lajocano and, and Jen Ballerin and Chuck and Sal and all these people that just helped. And then keep, they kept coming back repeatedly to work. And some of these hours were long. And then the moms are the heroes. With the kids, there's 100 kids in this thing. The kids never complain, but the moms had to be there the whole time. And the dads to a degree, but most of the time. Yeah. This is a movie, the stars of this movie are the kids, which I think is great. There's a lot of kids in this movie. This, ki this movie is about children. It's about, it's about woman empowerment for, for Mother Cabrini, and it's about faith. So it's a beautiful story about a woman, you know, second-class citizen back in the 1890s who just never took no for an answer and just took over and got it done. It's almost like Father Baker on steroids, this lady. <laughs> and he was a great man, and this lady's a great woman, and then she's now a saint, obviously. But it's a beautiful story. And the nice thing about the extras or the background people is the way that um, Alejandro, the director, did it, everybody's in the shots. They all tell their own story visually with their look and their clothing and how they're positioned. So you're telling a whole story with the background, which I haven't seen before, and I've been doing this a long time. So everybody, it's not like a big crowd scene, it's people in the crowd individually telling a story and dialogue with the other people. So can this you, can, can it, you imagine the excitement when the, and everybody here in town finally gets to see it? Tim, we have to talk, uh, whenever we talk about movies being filmed here, uh, we have to understand from you that this New York State tax credit is responsible for a lot of the movies being shot here because it, it gives them, I don't know exactly how it works, but it's some kind of incentive. And I don't know how it works, but it's very important, isn't it, to getting the films to be shot here? 
Yeah, it is, Judge. You know, it's funny because um, uh, we all know what Buffalo is. You know, those of us who live here and who uh, work here, we travel by some of these spectacular sites architecturally and otherwise each and every day, and we sort of take it for granted. So you need a little inducement, though, for, uh, you know, producers who've not been here before and who have not seen this great community uh, to sort of get to, uh, you know, get get an incentive to come here. And uh, so uh, through the auspices of the governor's office for motion picture and television development, uh, they offer a 25 uh, percent um, uh, rebate basically on below the line expenses. Now, that doesn't mean you know, the stars' salaries and, you know, all of that. It, it means the workers and, uh, and the camera rental and the car rentals and all of the, you know, things that they uh, consume here, the, the uh, expendables. And, um, and then to come up to a place like Western New York here, there's another 10% on below-the-line labor, those, those workers that I discussed uh, moments ago. And, and so it gets them very competitive to come to a place like Buffalo or Niagara Falls or Blackport or any of the places in the area here. And so once we get them here, uh, you know, we see that they just realize that this is a community that they'll feel very comfortable in, that we can help them, you know, shoot their movie or make their movie. Uh, we're very connected to the uh, sort of governmental uh, uh, administration here as well as you know the community uh sort of uh, uh network that exists and uh, they realize they're in pretty good hands when when indeed they come here i i would say too that cabrini is another great example as was marshall of uh, period movies and western new york in particular buffalo in the city you have so many of these great landmarks that have lasted here uh, for decades, and in some cases, centuries. And uh, I will say that you just don't find that in many other American cities around uh, 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 America anymore. You just don't see the sort of uh, infrastructure and buildings from the 1800s that you see uh, here in Western New York. So I think that bodes very well for us too. We're very, very uh, hot on um, uh, recreating things from a bygone era. You mentioned that we need the support of the uh, administration, whether it be locally, mm -hmm. the mayor, uh, and the, actually the legislators in Albany because of this uh, state tax incentive that's so important. I know you're going to tell us, and we all know that May, uh, Mayor Brown has been really supportive, and do you know how uh, Governor Hochul is going to feel or is going to react with you? <laughs> I do. I've known uh, Governor Hochul for quite some time now, uh, and uh, when she was a uh, council person in Hamburg, and I will say that uh, she is a uh, very intuitive and very good uh, uh, person who gets economic uh, opportunity and economic development very, very well. It is very fundamental core. I think she sees, uh, you know, the potential here as well as what we've accomplished thus far. And, um, and you're right, Mayor Brown, County Executive Polling Cars, these are people who actually, you know, don't just talk a big game, they're actually, um, uh, you know, roll up their sleeves and get right into it. Um, they're principal funders of ours. Uh, and uh, I will say, you know, uh, even Mayor Brown was on set the, the one night uh, to sort of uh, see what was going on. And I think he was even impressed just at um, just how much activity was happening uh, there as well. It was also very nice to see Frank Todaro, the Erie County legislator there. Um, now, his son came in, as Frank described, as a stand-in. Um, but then Frank got involved himself. I think uh, I think Frank uh, Rossi realized that Frank Todaro might actually uh, uh, fit very well in the movie. And um, in fact, uh, he was cast as well. So it was sort of a, a, a nice uh, a thing to see community involvement the way it it, it sort of unfolded. But to get back to your original uh, question, yeah, I think without Mayor Brown and without uh, County Executive Polling Cars, we would not be as successful as we are at the moment. Now, speaking of success, we've heard stories that there's going to be a new studio or reports, new projects that right. will propose new studios. Uh, we heard about, I think, Niagara Street and ev even somewhere else in the waterfront. So is that true? And how? what, what difference would that make for us economically here? 
Oh, it's true. Uh, and I will say that uh, it would make a huge impact, uh, 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 enormous impact on this economy. Uh, and it will. I, I predict that we're going to be uh, uh, spinning out uh, episodic television very soon. And, you know, it's great when a movie like Cabrini comes here because they will indeed spend millions of dollars in a short period of time, tens of millions of dollars, in, in, quite honestly. And uh, but these episodics will come in for years at a time. Uh, multiple seasons, multiple episodes. Each episode will be in the millions. Uh, so it's it's just phenomenal what kind of money is spent in in uh, in this sort of industry, and it includes everything. You know, not just the hiring the local crew and the acting base and so forth. It includes uh, you know uh, the taxes that are generated on those uh, on the fuel for those big trucks. Uh, the uh, you know, all of the great uh, lumber yards and the expendable places throughout Western New York, there, there's a quite a, a footprint that's left and an imprint that's left in uh, the hospitality industry at the hotels and so forth. But also, you know, it, just at places that uh, that offer catering, that offer lumber, that offer uh, art supplies and camera gear and things like that. We have companies that wouldn't have existed. That there was no need for a, a grip and electric house or a camera house to be here a few years ago, but now they're actually plentiful. And um, it's it's nice to see because it's not just growing the base of workers, but it's also creating a new business sector as well. People, people don't realize how much talent in every aspect we have here in Western New York. You know better than anybody else, Frank, because you started out as an actor and got into this casting yeah, uh, look, business a mm -hmm. little, but you know how much talent there is here in Western New York. I lived in LA, I mean, New York six years and 18 years in LA. So as an actor, I did that and I was coach, I've been coaching actors 25 years. So yes, I'm a big fan of our guys and girls here, the talent here. Because, uh, like I said, you have to be able to audition comparably with New York and L.A. people. So you have to know what you're doing when you audition. And we have the talent. Tim's been great. Rich Wall's been great. The mayor, awesome. And with TV coming here, that's going to be an explosion of work. Because TV's repeated, like Tim said. It's all union. It's beautiful. The residuals are great on television. Even much better than film, actually. So TV's <laughs> the way to go. I still get checks. I started out on Miami Vice one time when I was a kid. <laughs> You're still get residual checks. The other yeah. day I got 24 cents. But I mean, the point yes, is they keep I going. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hate to bring this up, but when, when I was in Buffalo 66, I, I still get checks for 25 cents too. There you go. Years so ago. It's, uh, it's uh, all beautiful. Uh, Tim, before we go, this is our, my favorite question, because when I'm going to ask you this question, and then you're going to say, oh, I can't tell you. It's a secret, blah, blah, blah. You're going to act like all uh, big things going on, but I need, we need to know a preview of what's coming next. And I don't want that answer that I can't tell you. <laughs> well, I can tell you that um, uh, how we started this interview was talking a little bit about Jonathan Sanger and uh, his business uh, uh, producing partner, MJ. They're looking at bringing back a, um, a, a project here uh, quite soon. And uh, so we're, we're anxious to welcome them back. And uh, we have been talking, uh, and again, so much of this. I probably, uh, as you know, Judge, have maybe the strangest job in, uh, in the Western region here because uh, we know a lot of things, but we can't talk about them because everything <laughs> is say that. quite close to the job. <laughs> I can, you're honest. I can talk well, about Well, you should it. know, as a judge, you know, <laughs> the, of course, you're, you, there's a, a veil of secrecy, and, um, and that's really what we have. But I really want to just say also in conclusion that uh, uh, it's a real salute to you, Judge. Uh, you know, you've, uh, you've been uh, involved in this community as a community leader for so, so many uh, years. Tim Clark, <laughs> Buffalo Niagara Film Commissioner. Thank you for updating us on all the productions coming to town. We well, love it's, talking it's to been you. an honor, Thank Your you Honor. So Thank you very much. And Frank Rossi, casting director and actor and man for all seasons here. Thank you for making us all stars on the big screen, especially wow. you know who that's coming up. <laughs> we'll talk with more people involved with the Cabrini movie as we get closer to release. Stay with us. More of the big picture is coming up after this break.